Most gracious and heavenly Father, you call us to be a light to the world, a light that shares your grace, your love, and your mercy, that shares the love that you have for those that don't even know you. So, Father, let our eyes be open to see your hand at work, our ears be open to hear your word, our hearts be over to able to embrace your word and act upon it. And Holy Spirit, move in our hearts so that we may draw closer to our Lord. We pray these things in the precious name of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. It is wonderful to see you in the house of the Lord today where we truly do worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And guess what? As always, he is glad that you're here today to worship him. Because that's what we're called to do. We're called to worship our Lord. He takes great joy in hearing your voices raised up and seeking him. I have a question for you this morning. I always start off with a question, don't I? It seems like that way. But maybe this is a question that you've thought about or maybe not even thought about. Are you a world changer? Are you a world changer? Would you like to be a world changer? Think of all the things in the world that we could change by sharing God's grace, His love, and His mercy. Are you a world changer? Do you want to become a world changer? I think this is kind of where our topic goes today because all through our scriptures today it really is about how do we affect the world as Christians? How do we reach out to the world as Christians? Just as in our Leviticus reading it said don't take all the crop, leave the gleanings on the edge. Why? Because that would leave for the poor that they could come and they could gather those gleanings and have something to eat. It was almost like a tithe you really look at it. But this is what he's saying. He's saying, you can be a world changer by leaving things for them that they may know that God is present. You see, Israel knew that they were the chosen people, right? But it doesn't mean they had the silver spoon. It doesn't mean that they were entitled. Well, we're God's children. We don't need to do anything. No. That wasn't what it was about at all. What it was about is that God had chosen them to be a light to the world, to be someone to go out and to reach all the nations, not just one of the tribes of Israel, well, the tribe of Dan, Dan really likes the tribe of Judah, and the tribe of Judah really likes, you know. It wasn't about that. It was about that they were to be the light to the world so that the world who did not know who God was would come to know who God is. And it's only by our actions and by how we reach out and touch others that they may know. The Gentiles, the Samaritans, the Jewish people didn't like them. Jewish people thought that the Samaritans, as I've said before, were dogs. They were half-breeds. They were not worthy. And they kind of ostracized them. Of course, the Romans, who subjected them, how can you love the Romans? Look what they did. They took our land. They suppressed us. They oppressed us. How can we love them? But that's what God is saying in this passage. That's what Jesus is speaking to us in this passage is about reaching out to those that we would rather retaliate. Now, I don't know about you, but I've seen kids around that sometimes if they pick on you, you're going to strike back, right? We kind of take this eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth literally to be individualistic, but that's not what it was really about. It wasn't you're going to take the justice, we're going to take it to somebody to give justice for what justice is due. It's not in your hands because God says, I will take vengeance. So an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth doesn't come to the individual rights. I know when I was in high school, you didn't want to get into a fight. And and I never liked fighting. I was not the kind that would go out and pick fights or be a bully or anything like that. Every once in a while, somebody would come and they want to check their 
uh, testosterone levels, as they would say, and, you know, try and pick a fight with you. <laughs> but the thing is, is that if you won that fight in the high school that I was at, if you won that fight, guess who you had to fight next? Their brother or their cousin or whoever it was. It just went on and on and on. But you see, that's retaliation. That's retribution for something that occurred to them. And Jesus is talking about let us not take and let us not be in retaliation against somebody. And that's hard to do. Our human nature says, well, we ought to retaliate. Well, my neighbor's dog did something on my yard and I'm going to go put it on his front porch. <laughs> that's not what we're looking at. It's not about retaliation. In fact, John Stott writes this in, in the book, The Cross of Christ. He wrote, To live under the cross means that every aspect, every aspect of the Christian community's life is shaped and colored by it. In other words, last week we were talking about where if you had something against someone or they had something against you, go correct it. It was on an individual basis. It was like, don't come to the altar if you've got something that's pending against somebody and you just can't stand them. I mean, because we really want to have peace with God and if we don't have peace with each other who are Christians, how can we have peace with God? That's the thing. But today is not just about St. Elizabeth. It's not just about us individually. It's not just about us as Christian community. It's about us reaching out to other communities because God shows no partiality. You see, God loves those who don't even love him. God loves those who curse him. God loves each and every one of his creation, no matter who they are. But if we're not the ones who are reaching out and showing God's love, how can they know? How can they ever experience it? He goes on to say the cross not only elicits worship and enables us to develop a balanced self-image, but it also directs our conduct, con, conduct excuse me, in relation to others, including our enemies. Including our enemies. It's our relationship with others, including our enemies. In fact, Paul writes in Romans 12, he, said, he writes this beginning at verse 17. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Now listen to what Paul instructs us to do as Christians out into the world. He says, to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing, you will heap coals, burning coals, upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You see, when somebody reacts to you and causes you harm, and you actually pray for them, and you actually bless them, what does it say to them? It doesn't mean that we're supposed to sit there and take abuse. It doesn't mean that we're supposed to sit there and, you know, let somebody really take advantage of us. But we know that if we retaliate, then we're no different than the world. We're no different than anybody else. And they won't see Christ in us. The other side of that in our gospel when he says, greet your brothers and sisters, but also greet someone else. And why? Because everybody can do that, can't they? Everybody can greet somebody. They can say, howdy neighbor, how you doing today? We can always greet somebody. Now, I've noticed it happen here a couple times, but when you're driving in Texas... You ever been dry? You ever driven through Texas? Yeah. You go down the farm to market roads, what's everybody doing? Like this. You see that car going the opposite direction? It's like, hear this? Anybody can do that. I mean, they just wave at you. But anybody can do that. And they're, they're friendly people. 
Now, if it was your enemy down the street, or two houses up, or 40 acres up, and you didn't like what they were doing, what kind of signal would you give them when you're driving by them? I'm not going to show you that. But what about if you waved and said hi? What would it mean to that person if you did that? How would it affect their lives? And this is what our gospel is about today. Our gospel is about how do we affect the lives of others? How do we show them about God's grace and love and mercy? How do we show them that God loves them? It's only by our example. It's only by what we do. It's only by how we react. And if we react with vengeance, if we react with retaliation, then what happens? We're no different than anybody else. But Christ calls us to be His and to be His children because we're called into Christ. As we read and heard in the Corinthians passage, do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit lives within you? But if you're going to be somebody who's going to be retaliatory, how can the Holy Spirit and the peace of God live within you? You see, we can be world changers. We can be world changers by showing the love and the grace and the mercy of God. Reverend Marion, when she spoke here, she spoke about the two in Ireland, in Northern Ireland, the Catholics and the Protestants, how they really didn't like each other and probably in some fashion they still don't like each other. And there's still animosity between the two, but how these two gentlemen changed the world because they realized that they really weren't enemies of each other. It was an ideology that was keeping them apart. But they shared Christ's love with each other. They went out to change the world. Two men. They had to find it in prison, but God will use any circumstance you're in to get his message to the world. What is it today that we have? What is it that we can do to change the world and to share Christ's love? Why did he come into the world so that we could be reconciled to God? Jesus came here not to condemn the world, but to save the world. Jesus came to die for our sins. And think about Jesus on the cross. When Jesus is on the cross... And the other two were there next to him. One of them was ready to shout obscenities and everything else at the Romans. And, you know, if he had any saliva, he probably would have spit on them. Probably would have called them all kinds of names. But what did Jesus do? Jesus said what? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Stephen, who was one of the first deacons in the church, spoke and he shared what God had done and what Jesus had done for him. There was Saul, who was standing there, who later became Paul. And they stoned him. The people laid their cloaks at the feet of Saul and they stoned him. But what did he say? Father, forgive them. You see, this is about God's love. Imagine what it must have felt like in their hearts to hear, at least one of them, to hear those words. You're doing this to me, but Father, forgive them. How would it have penetrated their hearts? Sometimes we don't like to hear, well, you know, they did evil, but something good came out, or they don't know Jesus, so why is God blessing them? Well, in our reading today, what does it say? The sun rises on both evil and good. It rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. God rains on them because He loves them. But it's our mission, our purpose as Christians. It's our responsibility to be world changers, to share that love. So that they know that, oh, that rain that came upon them came from a God who cares for me. 
the, the sunshine that comes upon them as a gift from God. So the question for you today is this. How will you be a world changer? How will you change the world? And do you want to be a world changer? If you do, then seek God's purpose. If you do, share His love, the same love that He showed even on the cross. Jesus in His Beatitudes when He was sharing the teaching the sermon on the mound I usually say mount because it's baseball season okay you didn't get that one but sermon on the mount and here's the thing that he said blessed are who the peacemakers for they shall be sons and daughters of God and this is how the world will see us not by retribution not by retaliation not by any other form but only by God's love there's a writer Alexander Haidt and he wrote this in one of his diaries and it was a confession about this man who was living in the same house as he was and he said that this man, when they sat at the same table, was someone that he found unendurable. Just couldn't stand being there with him. He said he took himself to prayer until he was able to write. That was probably a long time, but God can percolate through you. And he said, next morning I found it easy to be civil and even benevolent to my neighbor. And I felt that the Lord's table today as if I would yet to live to love that man. I feel sure I will. You see, when we allow Christ to be in our lives, when we allow Christ to guide our lives, then we can show even our enemies the love of Christ and to change the world. Today, will you be a world changer? We say, Lord, I want to change the world today. I want to change what is happening. I want to show your love that the hatred that is out there now may be changed because of the love that you give. Amen. And that mission involves you and it involves me. It's a mission to change the world. It's a mission for us to be world changers. God strengthens you, empowers you, and gives you the wisdom to go into the world that you may show His grace, His love, and His mercy. He provides all that we need by His love. Will you be a world changer today? Will you go into the world and change it by sharing God's love, His grace, and His mercy? Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, because God will strengthen you. Hold fast that which is good, because He is good in you. Render no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, for they will know who God is. Support the weak, because they can have strength in God. Help the afflicted. Give them and show them the comfort of God. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.